Hope Hi, I'm on, but I need my tea. Thank you all for jumping on the call. Um, I'm Zoe, and I normally host these menopause calls, but tonight the other Zoe, Zoe Howarth, is going to be hosting this call tonight. So um, I'm going to hand over to Zoe, and she's going to introduce the guest speakers, and I'm going to be um, completely watching tonight. So over to you, Zoe. Hello, thank you, Zoe. <laughs> Hi, my name's Zoe. Um, I live in Chorley. Um, I have been suffering with menopause symptoms for probably nine years now. I started when I was, before I was 40. Um, can you all hear me okay? Um, so, sorry, I'm just, that's it. Um, I didn't realise what it was at the time. And I went to, I did a load of research. I love reading. I love researching about stuff. Um, and I thought it was perimeno. So I went to the doctors and she said, no, you're too young. Absolutely. Just blew me out of the water. That's not what's wrong with you. You're, um, you've got, oh, what is it now? Um, dysphoric. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Meno brain. <laughs> um, you've got dysphoric um, disorder. So basically, I've always had PMT, but she basically said it's like PMT on acid, um, which it was. It was horrendous. Um, I would. It got to the point where I would spend in four days in my car just crying because um, I just couldn't function. So anyway, I did loads and loads of research, um, tried lots of different things, tried collagen, as you do, did nothing. Eventually went back to the doctor. I had a bit of a breakdown, went back to the doctors, and um, I was sort of adamant and perimenopausal of, I quoted all the nice guidelines and she was like, right, okay, you clearly know what you're talking about. I was like, uh, yeah. Um, so she said, let's do some blood tests. I said, I don't need a blood test. I'm over 45. Well, we'll do them anyway. Okay, whatever. So I <laughs> did all my blood test. Estrogen came back normal. Well, yeah, I'm still ovulating. I'm still in periods. Of course, it's going to come back normal. Um, but what about all the other symptoms that I've got? Right, what do you want? I said, right, I want estrogen. <laughs> so she put me on estrogen. Um, and that really helped my symptoms. So my main my main symptoms were night sweats, hideous night sweats. I didn't even know night sweats was a thing. I thought you just had a hot flush in the day. I didn't know night sweats was a thing. Um, so night sweats, joint pain. I couldn't turn over in bed without screaming in pain. The joint pain was so bad. Um, and the sort of anxiety, depression, that was another major, major symptom. Um, but I'd also noticed like my hair was falling out. I'd got a bit of a ball patch. Um, so the estrogen helped, I would say maybe 50% with most of my symptoms. Um, oh, and those are just a few of the symptoms. You know, the list where you have like 32. Well, I think it was easy to count how many I didn't have. <laughs> um, it, I was, it, it hit me really bad. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, and then I found another product. I found Zoe on Facebook. And you know, when you get to the point where I'll, I'll try anything, I'm just desperate, I will try anything. And Zoe was recommending these products. So I started taking these Amigas um, and they wiped my night sweats. My joint pain went. Um, I was training more than I'd ever trained. Um, and then funnily enough, I forgot to take them and then I ran out and I went on holiday in May. So I didn't have them for about three or four weeks. And I I noticed a massive difference. I was, I couldn't turn over in the night. My, my back pain was so bad again. So anyway, back on them, ordered and everything is good. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but everything I've read and researched, um, they all talk about Amigas, take your Amigas, buy a decent quality Amiga. Um, yeah, everything. So that's a bit about me. So um, I'm going to hand over to the lovely Gemma Norris. Um, Gemma um, is a very spiritual lady and she's got her own um, therapeutic clinic where she helps ladies go through all sorts of changes um, for their greater good. So I shall hand over to the lovely Gemma. Thank you, Zoe. Can everybody hear me okay? Perfect. Good. Well, welcome. I'm Gemma. I'm uh, I'm a remedial therapist and I've been working with the body professionally for about 15 years. And it's progressed from being Reiki 
to massage, to sports massage, myofascial release, all the way through to um, what I will call now somatic soul embodiment. So it's about understanding your body on a physical, emotional, mental and energetic level. If you recognize us as energetic beings, then it makes a lot more sense when we talk about energy, frequency, sound and emotions, because you look at emotions, they're energy in motion. So how I work is about showing people how they can understand what the message is of their body, how it's trying to communicate to you through pain and disease, because pain actually follows the same neural pathways as loneliness so i really see it is the body as much as we're feeling right now that your body is holding things against you it's actually trying to help you come back to your alignment to what is true to you what is your purpose what is your what is your soul calling for what is your joy it's really asking you to come back to that because women in general give away so much of themselves that um, they don't have enough for themselves. So the body will actually go into a burnout. And a lot of menopause is what I see is this transitioning for us to move from the maiden, the mother, and the wise. So actually we're going through a stage of showing up what is blocking us from our joy, what is blocking us to be empowered, to step up and speak our truth and who we are and be that complete authentic self. And to not be the peacekeeper, to sacrifice your own peace. It's really calling us to look at our how we give away all our energy when we're running around, where we're not putting boundaries in place, where we're not saying no to things. And we're just doing it, but we don't want to do it because we feel we should do, which is the energy of shame. It's the having to do something because you have to do it, not because you desire it. So it's really about calling to us our lifestyle and the energies and the emotions that we're carrying and our bodies actually will carry not just our emotions that we've held back and we've not processed you have probably heard of the book called the body keeps the score we also carry our mother wounds the feminine wounds that's come through our lineage because especially in the ovaries as they are forming when we're in our mother's womb and as so hers has when she was in your grandmother's. So we have this very distinct lineage going through our mother lineage, which trauma can come through. So if we haven't experienced trauma, there's not many women that I come across that haven't experienced it in some way. And whether it's childhood trauma, whether it's abuse, where it's narcissist uh, partners, there's been most likely some form in our life but also if it hasn't been so much, it would, have, it would have gone through our female lineage. And the reason what I wanted to talk about today, which is when Zoe mentioned this to me, and I sort of sat in and thought, well, what is this? What do I need to share for this today? Because there's so much I can talk about, but let's get it into this nitty gritty. It's rage. We carry so much unconsciously, subconsciously in our bodies is this anger, this suppressed anger. So the anger sits in our liver, which generates hot flushes and mood swings and all different aspects and of what we see coming up through into menopause. But the suppressed rage, which sits very deep, it can either sit around our breasts, but it also can sit around in our bladder and our womb. And this is where the feminine line has been abused. They've been taken for granted. And we can just look at history of what has happened. We don't have to just look at our own experiences. And the suppressed rage is when there's been no outlet of being able to say no. The betrayal that sits behind that. I mean, I have had an experience with a client where she was having liver issues and tension. And the word betrayal came up. And it wasn't hers. It was her mother's that came up. It was her mother's abuse so we are carrying this through and whether we like it or not, we are here to break these patterns. We are here to do the dirty laundry that our grandmothers and mothers and mothers and before us have handed down to us because they had no way or skill set of understanding how to process. And we are now choosing we don't want to carry that on to our children either. So we are like the pattern breakers. 
So we are needing to call out all this shite that we're carrying, okay? And we need to be able to do this consciously. Otherwise, we'll go through these anger mood swings. Um, as Zoe was mentioning, these up and down with emotions and things. We need to start calling this out and healing. I'm seeing a lot of womb healing needed, and that's coming forwards. And it's about being able to create space to allow that rage to come up to allow the throat chakra to open up and to connect into the sacrum, which is in our, like where the womb and the whole reproduction and our bladder sits. So how I've done that is a lot about doing meditation. It's been about getting on, um, on four legs, doing the cat cow and being able to breathe into that and asking and calling that energy to come through. And thank you, Zoe. And it's just really about how we can consciously connect. I mean, I'm actually setting up something which came to me in the boxing class to actually set up boxing where people can consciously just let their shit out, okay? And even if you don't know what it is, you don't need to know what it is. If you do need to know, if you, it, it is something you are aware of what it is, then it's been able to really process that. And that's what our organs are, our liver, what we do is the anger to burn it through. We then have the small intestine, which is about discerning what do we take, what do we not want. And, and then the last point is forgiveness. But it takes a lot to get to that point. So we have to go through all these emotions. We, As a female, we have to play the 88 keys of being female. We can go from one minute being bawling our eyes out, not understanding why, to then suddenly being really angry and then being totally calm. We need to hold that space for ourselves. And when we're busy doing everything, we're not going to give ourselves that, that space or that time. And we will burn ourselves out. Our adrenals become fatigued and we're not going to be creating the, the producing the estrogen that we need because we're, the adrenals are fatigued. So I've got a little something that I wrote a little while ago when it was when I was connecting into the consciousness of what to release and it was coming up with this this rage so if if you want if you're happy for me i'm going to read this to you as like a little semi meditation just to call this through and we're coming up to the full moon on sunday so we're perfectly lining up to shifting our shite okay we are calling that light out we're calling it out because we are choosing our joy I'm choosing my joy. That's your power, choice. You've always got a choice. Fear will tell you you don't have a choice. So it's about being able to see the different perspective. Okay, so I'm going to read this out for you. And if you're able to get yourself settled, if you already are, get your feet to the ground just so you can feel grounded. <clears throat> and... Just bring our hands to our heart. So put your left first, because that's closest fashionably to your heart and your right, right hand over so. And we're just gonna take some gentle breaths. We don't have to change too much, but we can just call our shoulders to relax, sitting more into our seat bones if we can. You can close your eyes if you wish. It's really up to you what feels right for you. And take a sigh out if you need to. Just give yourself that permission to make whatever noises that you need to make. You may feel a growl. You just might just be very quiet. That's absolutely fine. Just be in a space of observing yourself. Be curious. And take your self into more of your seat see if you can breathe a little bit deeper into your seat into your womb into your ovaries what i call your yoni breathing into her she has so much wisdom this is your joy center so we're going to really drop in here now and there'll be normal some nonsense there that like shame and guilt that will help you blocked from here and that's totally normal. So we're just going to call out 
these emotions that no longer serve you, that no longer align to your joy. So you may wish to say out loud on your mind, I choose joy. I choose love. I choose peace. And as you breathe into your heart, this is about receiving, being the true feminine. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of joy. And I am worthy of peace. And bring it down to your feet, like you imagine your whole body is becoming this energy now. I am love. And I am joy. And I am peace. And with this moment, you can just choose how you wish to feel. Calling, asking, thanking your body to release what no longer serves you purpose or joy with the greatest ease and grace and comfort so you can trust your body, whatever it may present to yourself, just know that you can work through it. It's purely there showing you an old pattern to be free from. And your breath will just keep you in that objectivity, that curious, observant mind. And just allow these words now to float through the fabric of your mind and your body. I release the rage. The anger that burns and smoulders inside me within my conscious and unconscious body and mind. The injustice, the taken for granted, the non-consensual misuse of power and physical strength, the greed, the abuse, the taking of what was not theirs to take, the suppression of our sisters, mothers and daughters, the rage, the unspoken, the unexpressed rage. I allow it to ignite, to burn this rage, the undergrowth of society, this anger, this hurt, this fear, the blatant dishonoring and betrayal of the sacredness once honored in the masculine protection. I choose to be a vessel of release and expression yet no longer the burden held in mute shame. To no longer absorb both mine and their discomfort and guilt. I no longer sacrifice my inner peace to keep the peace, the status quo. I give this rage the opening, the air it needs to burn itself away to take its course and path of healing. I say no. No more, for I choose to be free. I choose to liberate myself, for I am equal and I am love. My heart burns openly with love. I burn until there is no more for the ashes to lay in peace. An ache, a residue of grief for what could have been. Upon such, I lay it to rest. I gather myself and rise in my newborn energy of inner peace, inner love, a fearless love of self and life. My sovereignty, my inner power, held within the sanctuary of self-liberation and truth. And so it is. And just taking some deep breaths. A beautiful lab hasn't woken you already. And just give your feet a little tap. And just gently come around. Thank you, lovely ladies. I appreciate um, 
my run over time so if anybody got any questions they can feel free to i can hang on later if that helps sorry um so yeah thank you thank you Gemma. <clears throat> oh voice is gone <clears throat> thank you can you all hear me <clears throat> um yeah wow i love i love anything like that um i've been for the last six months trying to live in love let go of the fear um i've read you you will have you'll obviously know of it gabby bernstein um oh what's it called <laughs> what's it called uh, what's it what the universe has your back or yeah that one yeah the universe there's another has one your as back. well at the beginning yeah and i had it on audiobook and by chapter three my life had completely changed just the way I viewed everything I totally recommend it um but I've done like loads of work and yeah definitely meditation and that letting go of the fear is yeah it's really it's really important um and we might not even know we've got it that's I, I was just gonna say yeah you don't know and um the ancestral and the lineage the the fear from that that's that's unbelievable isn't it it's is huge um, i mean we're carrying yeah. our own and we're carrying our ancestors yeah. so we yeah. have a bit of work to do but when we're conscious of it we can shift it it's we can like do it, yeah oh that's an emotion that's not love it's not joy it's not peace right that can move on what's it trying yeah. to show me what do i discern from it what do i learn from it right move on it's not getting into the story into the vortex of the emotion because once we have the thought the emotion it becomes the reality so we have to break that pattern yeah. and not create the emotional connection with it yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Great tip. Um, well, thank you very much, Gemma. That was brilliant. Um, That's fine. And if you want any more information about me, there's I've got I've set up a new health empowerment platform called the Infinity Health Hub. And that's where I'd be putting some free material on there. There's also a paid membership thing to get into more information like uh, meditations, um, and there's also my new course that I've created as well. So if which is called the love to heal. So it's all about listen, observe, visualize and power. It's about really finding that self love and acceptance. So um, and I got, I've got a voucher code if people are interested to get some money off. So, but I don't know. I can always share that in my Facebook group as oh, well. You know, okay, so I'll I do that. put all that information in there and people can have access to that. Right. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. That was brilliant. Um, and now I'd like to hand over to Nick, the, just as lovely. <laughs> um, Nick sort of saw my progress taking the Amigas and we used to train together and we got chatting about menopause and what we do and how we can help ourselves. So um, Nick started taking the Amigas as well and noticed some improvements. Um, and then she started taking some other whole food uh, products that we take. So I'll hand you over to Nick and she can tell you anyway. <laughs> okay, Nick, just unmute yourself. Hi, <laughs> can you hear me okay? I've got you all balancing on top of a kitchen roll here while my phone's charging. <laughs> That's from a few five years of doing working from home online meetings. <laughs> I mastered it, but no, my laptop for some reason won't accept Zoom at the moment, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, so can you hear me okay? Yeah, so I think I popped on before a few months back now, as a while back, it was probably about a year ago. Um, so um, it just it's just um, it's just to kind of really just share um an experience that I had that I hadn't associated with being perimenopausal I'm 46 now and um so two years ago I wasn't really um even my, a lot of my friends at work and I work for the NHS so we've got a lot of female dominant uh, workforce um in where I work and um it, I, you know I've seen lots of my friends work friends going through uh, the menopause in very different ways um and they've all kind of been all like uh, in like 50 beyond um so I thought oh I'm too young um, and it's again, it's just from talking, isn't it? Talking to you, Zoe, and chatting, and and I've noticed that I was having um a lot of aches and pains, and I I wasn't sure what that was all about. And I, the usual kind of visit my mattress. Is it? Am I eating something that's not agreeing with me? Am I ill? Have I got a viral? It was on the back of lockdown, so I'm like, what's going on? Um and um and it was Zoe's suggestion of let's try 
why don't you you know have a go with these if you you know and so i did and and i think um the, the, what i noticed the difference is it's not only just taking the omegas i did notice within a matter of months um uh, that the aches and pains seem to just disappear and they've never returned i've just not had that experience um and but the, it made me realize the knock-on effect um and something i wanted something to happen to interfere with that circle that you get yourself in um because i was feeling extremely tired i wasn't sleeping very well and when i'm not sleeping very well and then eating a different diet i'm trying to give them a quick fix energy diet um, I'm then feeling really quite sluggish and I'm then starting to criticise myself for not being the competent mum and worker and all the other stuff that kind of comes with this role at the moment. Um, so you kind of can go very quickly fall into like lacking that self-compassion and moving into a different direction. Um, and actually my working very much involves self-compassion. I work in mental health, work in psychotherapy and it's very much about I practice mindfulness. So I was very aware of what changes I was experiencing and, and that something could be different here. Um, and it was making that informed choice. Moving on to the Amigas kind of got me thinking about my body and what works for me and what doesn't. And I haven't been really strict. It's not a kind of a case of complete overhaul change, overhaul. But what I do now, and my little tip um, for myself is that what I'm putting into my body and how I move my body and the permission to kind of rest my body and my mind um, is kind of in full flow now. I'm really kind of getting there with it. And I think that was the thing, it's the permission to just notice what's going on and to notice what's going on externally and the influence that can have on me um, and kind of just been look, looking after myself a little bit more. And I've even noticed that sometimes recommendations, I might go down a certain route, but mindfully I noticed that's not really quite for me and I might take a different pathway. Um, but I think I'm far more in tune now than I have been for a long time in what my needs are. Um, and it's actually quite a liberating place to be. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I'm hoping that continues. Who knows? Um, but I think talking to other people who are experiencing it, it's really validating. I think that's what's really helped me as well. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm up to at the moment. <laughs> um, that's brilliant, Nick. Yeah, yeah. I've introduced other products that I'm having. A, I'm willing to experiment. I think that's one of my, my mottos over the years. Um, and I brought in some kind of the uh, the same um, brand, but um, the the kind of berries, antioxidants, and the differences I noticed there, feeling a bit more energized. Um, but again, it's made me be aware of also other foods that I choose to put in my body. And I've been spending quite a bit of time at my friend's allotment. So I came away the other week with me radish and coriander and you name it. And that was just a lovely place to spend an hour with her who's having a really tough time with the menopause. She's really struggling. So we spend a bit of time and as two women together who've grown up together in a peaceful place and messing about with our organic. And I'll make the time to do that. I'll give myself permission for that hour. Um so yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, like you say, giving yourself permission. It's yeah. Why? Yeah. Why aren't we? Why aren't we doing this? Because <laughs> we we do. We just get dumped on, don't we? Do this, do that. Kids, housework, working, and it's a lot different than it was a hundred years ago. When women had kids, they didn't go to work. Well, we've all got full time jobs now, haven't we? And then we've still got to come home and run the house and sort that out. And aging parents and all the other shite that Gemma says <laughs> that we've got to deal with that yeah we, we do overlook ourselves so I think it, it's great that yeah we've got to look inwards and give ourselves that permission to just stop or just say no I, I'm not doing the housework this evening no I'm not doing it um I'm going to go to my friend's allotment instead which sounds fantastic <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's great and it's, though, isn't it? it's really powerful um strong connection and i think it certainly is with my female tribe you know yeah. and i've got yeah and i think that's that's kind of going when you're feeling a bit vulnerable i think you feel quite lonely can't you um, yeah so you can do yeah that's and that's i think true. like Gemma says the loneliness is the same pathway as the, the pain pathway isn't it so it's yeah that's really interesting um but I think as well, I've got friends that say, oh, God, you've got your shit together. And when we, we get talking, it's like, actually, none of us have got our shit together. We're all going through this and we're all just trying to navigate away and we're all just winging it. Um, but it just shows that we're all in it together. Um, so that's I, I love it when people say, you know, um, 
I love being with other women because we talk about and we're we're all going through it and none of us have got our shit together because <laughs> <laughs> you do you think that oh god they've they've got everything they've got it made and they haven't at all <laughs> so um <laughs> so, also yeah, so, Zoe you is... made a valid point didn't you about you know we're all we're all working we've all got kids you know but I think years ago the woman stayed at home didn't she cook the dinners um the dad you know the man went out to work but we live in such a different society today and I think that's maybe had a big impact on why we mm. ladies suffer so much more with menopause because we've got so many more stresses in our life haven't we day to day yeah and I'm not saying that looking after a household isn't stressful and looking after kids because it is but yeah when you've got a full-time job on top of that meetings to plan other stuff going on in your diary and you've got to get this done got to get that done it is it's another it's a whole other layer of pressure um that we're just well just not equipped to or are we equipped to deal with it we just sort of get on with it don't we and but then we suffer we suffer by just getting our head down and getting on with it so so yeah times times are changing um and I think we're a lot more empowered than what we were so so yes so is there any questions any comments So I just want to ask Gemma actually. So Gemma, that um that kind of little um session that you did with us, is that kind of part of the treatment that you offer ladies that are struggling one way or another or is that yeah, the taste? So I offer um so there's guided meditations that I do online for people, which is actually uh more powerful that we're more powerful than we realise when we really set into that and start really coming conscious into our body so I can do things online with people to um, support meditations I can do consultations online as well um, but with the hub it's where all the meditations sit to really connect into your into your body start choosing and becoming aware of what your patterns are and what you actually desire because I mean if you just ask yourself now what do you desire I think some of us may struggle. I found it's like, do we often ask ourselves that? What do I actually, what I want, you know? So it's it's that element that I do online, but also one-to-one um, -one as well, which is the really sort of, I kind of think that is like that when you're plugging in. So I'm plugging in and they're plugging. It's quite powerful from that perspective as well. But doing um, group sessions is a really powerful one as well, doing circles for women. It's... Um, and everyone I'm just conscious of me being down in sunny old Devon it's not necessarily relevant for some people with the low location but with the online stuff we've got the course and we've got um you know the, the hub as well to access to William yeah um I'm gonna check out your stuff on Facebook Gemma I did I've, I have been looking at it but um I need it's funny I was I was already saying out loud earlier I need some new guided meditations and then it'll pop you pop here I am <laughs> so, See? Here you are. go. <laughs> so the once you know what you about. want <laughs> once you know what you want and you're specific it's, about it it yeah, comes it's given so, yeah yeah it's given so uh so I'll I'll be plugging in tonight <laughs> perfect and there's the pajama revolution as well which I do once a month as a guided meditation live for people to tune oh, in fantastic. that's a Facebook group so, but I'm trying to bring everything into the hub so it doesn't come too complicated. Sounds great. We'll all, we'll, we'll all be checking it out, I'm sure. Thank you. Um, how, much, how much time have we got, Zoe? Um, so, I, it's not telling me we're running out of time yet, so I think we must have about five minutes still. It says so, two minutes yeah. on my screen. Oh, does it? Mm. Oh, no, it does. Sorry, I've just, I've just seen the time thing. It's changed. It used to be in the middle. It's not right now. Um, yeah, sorry, just over two minutes. Well, Anybody? thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, it's lovely to see you all here. And you've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in Zoe. Um, ask us questions. We'll talk about menopause. We'll bore you all day long <laughs> with menopause. Um, so, uh, yeah, any questions, any comments? Well, if you do think of something, 
um, just pop it in the menopause group. Um, Zoe can, can direct it to me or whatever. Um, so yeah, just great to see you all and happy menopausing. <laughs> can I just can I just say I just think from this moment on, just give yourself some space, breathe, and stop you. Just honour yourself more and know that you're worthy of that. So. Yeah, definitely. Love yourself more. Yes. Try and live in, live in love. It's not as easy as it says, though. <laughs> it's been a journey <laughs> for me. So.